welcome back. Got another episode, Real Bread Life. Um, I am Jay Rome, aka Jug. I got my man Carl here. So I've been trying to get Carl on for a while now. So we finally got him here. Carl, thanks for coming in. So um, introduce the people. Tell them where you're from originally. Um, from Statesville, North Carolina, a um, little small town or city. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, man. Okay, okay. How long you been in CT? Uh, going on 21 years. My son be 21 in December. Okay, son be 21 in December. Um, that's the oldest. That's the oldest. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, what prompted the move from uh, from the south up here to Connecticut? Was it family or just a change for you? Yeah, a change for me. Um. Better opportunity, you know. Okay. Coming from down there, the minimum wage was very so coming up here it was just, you know, you getting paid more money. So Yeah, yeah. yeah so Two thousand two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they passed all those minimum wage laws yet. <laughs> no, <I don't> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um I obviously I met you doing bread, you know what I mean, in the depot and, and doing what we do. What were you doing before you started doing bread? I was working in a warehouse, Fort Lift um, operator, running the back rooms, um, shipping and receiving. Okay. Um, do you don't you don't want to say the company or who you? Was uh, it was uh, Peter Paul was the last place I was at. Okay, yeah, but yeah. not in Naugatuck, was it? It was in uh, not Cinebrook, um, New Britain. Okay, New Britain. So you came up from down south, started working the forklift. Was somebody you knew working there, or you just came up here, filled out, and ended up getting that job? Yeah, I just came in and filled out. Like, I didn't really know nobody when I came, so I just filled out, and they hired me, and I just stuck to it till <laughs> better opportunities, you know? <laughs> okay, till something else came along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So speaking of something else coming along, would that have been the bread, or did, what did you do after that if it wasn't the bread? It was the bread. Um, okay. I actually met with Matt. My dad actually worked there, and I used to do weekends with him. And then the opportunity it came up, so I met with Matt like on a Wednesday, and we oh, started okay. talking. And he was like, "You like to make up to a thousand dollars, man?" It wasn't even no question. <laughs> <laughs> a stack ain't nobody turning okay. down a stack. Yeah, okay, yeah. so yeah, so that was gonna be my next question. Um, who introduced you to the to the business? So it was your pops. Yeah, yeah. So your pops was already in the business. Yeah, he had owned a route before, and then he ended up selling it, and then he went in the truck driving. But he did weekends for Matt. Okay, so, so he stuck around. He knew the potential and the money there, so he didn't want to yeah, leave nothing on the table. Yeah. So he gave me like a part-time gig running with him. So that's what I used to do the weekends with him. Okay. So yeah, and that was going to be my next question. After you were introduced to the business, how long did it take for you to learn it? But you kind of got grandfathered in. Yeah, yeah. It took it took a while, man. Like a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, What's um, a while? Say I did it with him for almost four years. Okay. Before I came full time. And I've been with Matt for a little over 10 years. Okay, so yeah, so that's that's all uh, right. I was there for a little while, then I saw you pop up more more frequently yeah, like that. So, yeah. um, so it took you a while to learn. Yeah, because you were doing mostly on the weekends. Mostly on the weekend. What type of route was it? Was it uh, a combo? Because I know now your route is a little different with like uh, institutions and yeah. things like that. So yeah. was it a lot of stores when you first started? Yeah, the only institution we had at that time was Burger King and uh, Community Solution. But it was mostly stores like Bravo and Stop and Shop and Geisler's, places like that. Okay. So um, you don't remember how many stops was on that route back then when you were just learning, do you? Maybe, I want to say maybe about six or seven, because we did a couple of common lessons at home, too. They ended up shutting down. But we did a couple of those, so maybe about seven stops. Okay. How, how many stores, how many stops your route got now, just yours, the one you do on the regular? I got 14 schools and then maybe like six other stops off of that. Okay, so what is it combined when you do both routes at the same time? Ooh, it'd be, <laughs> <laughs> if you do both, uh, about 22, about, about 22 routes all, stops all together. Okay, yeah. it's a long day. So it could be, yeah, <laughs> a long week. Yeah, so with that being said, I'm saying it's a long day, but just thinking about how you structure it would be the real difference. Yeah. So let's talk about the um the breakdown process. 
as far as um, deliveries for me. I'm asking you. I know how I do mine as far as heavier days, lighter days. Do you try to do the heavier days? You know, what, what, what's your heavier days? Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Because Mondays, it's mostly all schools. Because it takes me about a day to do them. It's about, like I said, 14. Then Tuesday, you got all the stops that you haven't did on Monday. Right, right. So which is like the other six or seven, you know, stops you got to do. So Okay. Now, with that being said, how has the new stale process, or I mean, I guess it could be the same process, but the way they're making us leave everything out all the way to code and some are shorter, some are longer. How's that affected you because you don't really do those stores on a Monday? Not really. Um I haven't really already had any stale because once again, I only really got stop and shot, which is my main one. So, but um, it's not really stale. The biggest thing is the inventory. Okay. Because, you know, in stop and shot, they could take up to an hour and dealing on Monday, because we do hours on Monday. So dealing with the schools, you got to be done by two o'clock. Right. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Then they put that rule in effect where you got to be back by 3.30. So it kind of like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're you're really on the hustle. We hustle anyway, but now you're really on the grind. (laughs) So uh, that's funny you say that because I do my inventory on Monday too. And I was talking to somebody the other day and they were telling me, I never do it on a Monday. I only do it on Tuesdays. And I figure I like to just get it out the way. I have a more accurate count um, with the shrink and, you know, Missing product, stuff in the back. You know what I mean. Yep, yep. Stuff that might have got stolen. Yep. Whatever the case yep, is. Yep. So I, I try to make sure that for me, I do it on a Monday too. So yeah. I find that works better for me. It really do. And then like for us, we had a situation. So, you know, we learned that skipping it and, and you know, doing it like on a Tuesday, like you said, you come in on a Tuesday and you might have mixed product from that Monday. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, ain't yeah, paying yeah, attention yeah. to it, and then that could build up. So we figured out and found out that on Mondays, it's most definitely more beneficial. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. No, nah, that works for me. I, I, I agree so much. What would be your most challenging stop that you would say is the, um not, not cha- yeah, challenging, more difficult, in and out the process, maybe other vendors? It, it used to be stop and shop. Which was probably the worst because you had to deal with so much, man. One mm-hmm. was just getting into the place. Sometimes you really? stand in the back for five, ten minutes ringing the bell, you know. So once you come in, then we had to dex, which was even more of a process. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes that was the biggest one, but majority of them, like I said, stop and shop was my major one. So it's more like an in and out. Has the um, not having the dex really been a plus for you? Or do you miss it? Because some guys think they said they want to go back to it. It's you know what? It's a catch twenty two. Talk once to again, me. Why? Why you say so? Once again, if if they're not doing the inventory, like I said, we found this out. Skipping the inventory is a bigger part of you bringing the product in. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, we're we're starting to learn it, and we're seeing where. Long as you're doing that inventory, you can always go through the door. I mean, imagine if you dex. I know a lot of guys just doing it because of the money situation. You meaning know, but meaning that with the shrinkage, they're getting hit with the shrinkage. Right. So, but to have to stand in the line, get counted in, it's gonna make your day longer. So that's where people are gonna start getting more upset, you know, because it's like, well, I just put 10, 15 minutes back on my time versus now you go in there. Um, you look at inventory when they do it in the stores, we don't get hit with that no more. Right. You know, so we used to have to have everything out of the back room and you know, all that. Now gotcha. you don't have to worry about that. Well, you can't make a delivery that day because of inventory. But right. Now we can do that. So like I said, it's a catch 22, you know, it has its perks. Good <laughs> and bad. So I, I had, um, I was talking to some people and they were kind of explaining to me as far as with the decks and walking in, they said they still have to check their bread in, even though it's scan base. Like they, they, the receiver is exerting some type of authority saying, I got to check the bread, which I don't understand. Me either. I don't get that. Right. Because your scan base, there's no count. This is all on me. I'm yeah. responsible for this. Yeah. It's between me, the store and the cash register. Yeah. So yeah. I just think sometimes some receivers just want to have extra authority. You know, they want to flex. Yeah, we see that a lot. You see that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Got to show their power every once in a while, especially if they're having a bad day. Right, right, right. Yeah, Yeah. we don't want to even get in. But then you can't really get into it with them because 
they're in control. Yeah, we don't see that happen. You know, we don't see people lose their routes because of things like that. Yes, you yes. Know? So, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Stay blessed and keep stacking. <laughs> <laughs>